Unspoiled Network Podcast. This is Spoil Me, covering Jane the Virgin, Season 1, Episode 7, Chapter 7. In this episode, Jane is mercifully advised by her very wise mother to pump the fucking brakes when it comes to Raphael. But then Raphael makes a compelling argument that hadn't really occurred to me. And now I'm sort of like, maybe, 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 maybe. welcome to Spoil Me. Welcome to the show, everyone. I am Natasha. Thank you very much to Claire. No, Lauren. Apologies, Claire. Uh, Lauren, it's, it is this week. Thank you to Lauren for commissioning this episode. I am really excited at how many people are commissioning these, by the way, because when I started with this show on the list, on the roster, um, and announced that it was like available now for people to book, there was initially kind of no response and I really have to learn that that is sort of how it goes. Usually there's a moment where we have the message first disseminated and a lot of people don't even see it because of the way algorithms work. And then I go live and people see that I'm covering a thing. And now all of a sudden they're like, Oh wait, this is an option. So, um, yeah, thank you very much to Lauren. Thank you to Claire. I am really enjoying this show so much and it's so fun to cover something that like while it does touch on themes that are much more serious is pretty lighthearted in a lot of senses and feels like it's full of surprises all the time because they kind of just keep turning and doing the most surprising things. So this episode begins with a five years ago scene of Jane talking to her mother about the first time that she kissed Raphael. And I don't think it had fully, uh, I was going to say fully hit me. That's too, that's, that's implying too much that I was like at all aware. I didn't realize how young Jane was supposed to have been when this happened. But it turns out when she kissed Raphael, she was 19. And I don't recall if they mention how old Raphael was supposed to have been. I'm going to put him at like 23, maybe. I feel like he looked so much older in that flashback that there's a big part of me that wants to judge him pretty harshly for kissing a 19 year old and just had this entire scene. However, because of the way that casting usually works, I mean, she certainly doesn't look 19 in the scene either. So it's like the kind of thing where I'm just like, all right, look, I, I have to accept whatever it is that you tell me. But I love that Jane is talking to her mom about it. And her mom immediately is like, he sounds kind of like a playboy. I I just want to talk about her mom real quick because the show has handled Shamara in such a compassionate and interesting way. They have made her so like layered and complex. I love how they're able to be like, yeah, she likes to fuck around. Yeah. She likes to have a good time. Yeah, she can seem as if she's like flighty and unreliable, but actually she's like always there for her girl in a clinch. She puts her child first always and is super reliable in that sense. And so what if she likes to fuck around? Like that doesn't mean that she isn't smart or careful in the ways that she, you know, like she has certainly learned lessons and the fact that she is warning her daughter here can see through 
Raphael, this is the sort of thing that I find uh, I appreciate a lot more as I get older because I think about the way that my mother reacted. There was this um, this guy when I was in high school and he it was I was a freshman and I had just started to really come into myself and begin dressing in a way that I felt reflected who I was and begin to feel a little bit more confident in myself. And there was a guy who was starting to pay a lot of attention to me and he was a senior. He was 18 and I was 14. And that's a pretty significant difference in ages for that period of development. Yes, we are both attending the same school. Technically, we are both high schoolers. But 18 verse 14, there's a lot of, of space in there that is going to make a huge difference in the way that we see things and how we behave and what we know about the way the world works. And as a 14 year old, this guy paying attention to me the way that he did felt really overwhelming. And I was like caught up in the high of the first time ever having a guy pay attention to me in a way that I had never experienced before. And especially considering that when I was in middle school, I felt like such an outcast and like a weirdo. I had really not anticipated anybody being interested in me for a while. So when this happened kind of out of the gate in my freshman year of high school, I didn't know how to handle it at all. And I really allowed myself to get sort of wrapped up in it. And I remember a friend of mine had a Polaroid camera and took a picture of me and this guy together. And he had his arm around me, but he had his arm around somebody else in the picture too. Like it wasn't, he, there was nothing like particularly inappropriate about it, but I showed my mom the picture and she immediately said, I don't like him. I, I don't like him. He looks like a player and he looks like somebody who is not up to anything good. And I remember kind of being like irritated, although I wasn't as mad as you could might expect because there was a part of me, I think that knew also that he wasn't really like a good guy but three days later I found out that he had like a serious long-term girlfriend that he had never mentioned and he was over here all over me like at one point he came and kissed me on the neck and he like came up behind me sort of like a very intimate gesture and then I found out that he had been with this girl for like two years and it was like all over that he was flirting with me. And of course, as a girl, I often got blamed, even though I had no idea what was going on. But it was a moment of me realizing maybe my mom knows what the fuck she's talking about. And Jane here, it's not like she doesn't respect who, like her mother's thoughts. She says immediately in response to he sounds like a playboy. I know, I know he sounds like he would me would be, but he's not. So like she was doing, she's doing the same thing that I did where there's a part of me that is aware the way this seems. And, th and then I try to tell myself, no, 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 it's not actually like that. And that's the thing that I feel like age teaches you. It's such a fine line because as you get older, you can fall into the trap of just judging people by their, by their cover, you know, and you don't want to do that either. However, there is such a thing as learning from experience and being able to sniff out when somebody is full of shit. And you get better at it and you start to see the same behaviors, especially from people who are younger, because they're pulling the same shit without the experience behind them. They're, this is the first time they're pulling this shit a lot of a lot of the time because they're so young. So they really think that they're like slick with it. Whereas you've seen these exact same moves a million times and it is not new to you and it is not impressive. So when you're younger you can look at those like red flags and be like, no, no, no. I know it looks like X, Y, Z, but my situation is different. What other people go through might be predictable and trite and something that we've all seen coming. But what I'm going through 
is totally unique and special. And I don't fall for the same things that other people fall for. And experience teaches you that is pretty much bullshit most of the time. Like I have yet to encounter any truly unique experiences that I can't point to at least one other example of a similar way a person was taken advantage of or a similar way that somebody was like, you know, closing their eyes to the red flags. There's always a precedent of someone else I know who told themselves whatever they needed to in order to continue doing what they want, which is what it comes down to is like, you want a thing to be true. So you selectively look at the things you want to and close your eyes to the things you don't so that you can keep doing what you want and believing what you want and for a time getting the outcome that you want. But the thing is you can only close your eyes for so long and you can only like rely on the other person to behave in a way that matches with what you're telling yourself for so long before it begins to clash and fall apart. So it's so rough because Jane is talking to her mom about how sweet he was, how the kiss wasn't the best part, how they just connected with this talk and how it's like a, uh, you know, the, the, the whole feeling of this is how excited she is because apparently she was like into him for a while and didn't even think that he knew her name. So the fact that he pays attention to her this way, it's all being enhanced because of the fact that she was kind of obsessing over him a little bit and it feels like a fairy tale you know which that's the other thing that gets really tough is that when you like have something in your mind that's a sort of uh, a goal to reach and that goal is a person then it becomes even more difficult to see that person for who they really are because they have ceased to be a real person in your mind. They become this like this milestone almost, or like an achievement. And that becomes a really dangerous place to be and also be able to like see things clearly and, and look at reality. So we then jump to her, uh, Two days later, looking at her phone, and she looks really hurt. I like the detail of the fact that she's, like, shredding up a white rose while she's talking to her mom. Like, they just bring these white flowers in a lot for the symbolism of her innocence, her virginity, and the ways in which it gets, like, sort of mangled over, you know, different things happening. Um, and she's never gotten a call from him. And says to her mom, I really didn't think that he was a playboy. And her mother says, that's what makes a good playboy is you never feel like you're getting played, which is just the most valuable fucking lesson. I wish to God that we could like get that through our heads just as, as a people, like men and women alike, you know, and having been in this position only one time. I will say that I have been very lucky in that most of the guys I have been into in my life have been into me as well. But there was one particular guy who I had a really great connection with and waited to hear from him. Eventually I did, but it wasn't what I was hoping for. I thought that we had a much more serious connection than it turns out we did. And it took a long time before he got, and by a long time, I mean like maybe two weeks, but after you have been like really into somebody and they have your information and they could have dropped a message at any time. Two weeks is an eternity. So I really felt her in this moment and how like you, you feel stupid. You feel like a fool, you know? And her mother says, this is a good lesson from now on. Stay away from guys like that. And yeah, it's a really, uh, it is a valuable lesson. And Jane listens to her. But then we hop to her making out with Raphael under this tree. And I love this. Shamara shows up and interrupts. And she has a face on. Oh, she is not happy about this at all. She gives Jane a look 
Like, girl, really? And I was thinking she might be a little rude to Raphael. She isn't. She just kind of like gives, she's saving her irritation for Jane, not for Raphael. And I think that's appropriate. Raphael, yeah, he can be a playboy. He can be, but like Jane is the one who at this point should know better because she had her experience and she should have learned something from that. And there's only so much that you can hold responsible against the guy that is acting the way you fully expect him to act. Um, so we have then the drive home and Jane is so out of it. She's thinking about like the fact that she's making out with this dude and she had only broken up with uh, Michael like hours earlier and she almost like goes through a stop sign and has to slam on the brakes because she's completely out of she's just not in her head um and she's struggling because like as much as she knows that this is not a smart idea she still has a strong draw to Raphael. And her mom is asking her, what does it feel like? And Jane says, it just feels like it's meant to be. I know that sounds ridiculous. And her mom says, yeah, it does. I'm sorry. I have to say it. If you were me, you would say it. You just broke up with Michael, who you were with for two years. It's crazy to jump into something so fast. And Raphael isn't exactly a no strings attached rebound guy. And she brings up the baby. She brings up the fact that he used to be such a womanizer. And that is like, whether he's like that now, it is a valid thing to kind of be concerned that he was ever like that. You're from different worlds. And we see the two of them, like the ways in which, uh, it, that's represented because we have little icons at the bottom as she's saying these things. So we have the baby, we have the silhouette of a sexy woman, like the one that's on the mud flaps for trucks. Then we have a champagne versus like a can of beer. Then she says he's still married. And so we get an engagement ring and his soon to be ex-wife seems crazy. And we get a picture of Petra. And I was like, really grateful that she mentions the soon to be ex-wife being crazy because that's a big concern for me. And, I really appreciate that Shamara is being so real with her, even though she sees that what Jane is feeling here is very real. You know what I have such a hard time with you guys here is the fact that while all of this is true. And while I said these very same things last episode that she should pump the brakes, this is too much too fast. I cannot ignore the fact that I have done this my whole life, jump directly from one relationship into another. And there have been periods in there where I'm living by myself, but I was still in a relationship with somebody and it was a very serious thing. There was never any real like I'm single feeling. It was I'm living where I'm living until things move forward with that person. And I know inevitably that we are likely to move in together. So as much as I had some, some times where I was like in the technical sense alone in reality, I wasn't, you know, and I went from being married to Brendan to then saying that I wanted a divorce moving out and living with my mother for like four or five months. And then I think actually longer than five months. I think it might've been like seven or eight months. And then, uh, and that whole time kind of being in a relationship with Owen long distance. And I moved in with Owen in December of the same year when I had left my husband in like June uh, so less than, less than eight months. It was like five and a half, six months. That's really, really fast. And looking back, I can acknowledge that. And did things work out? Absolutely. I'm married to him. I, I, this is the guy I'm meant to be with. I have no doubt of that whatsoever. I feel like in the end, this was how things should go for me. However, if I were to 
do this all over again, I would try and handle it a lot differently. The main difference or the main trouble is that being single is a lot harder than it used to be because of the cost of living, which motivates people to get together faster than they otherwise would because living together is just so much more economically like helpful. But overall, I can see now as a 38 year old woman versus the 29 year old that I was during my divorce, I, I jumped way too quickly into this. That said, it did wind up working out. So it's a, you know, it's a really tricky thing. Sometimes you don't start from an ideal position and things manage to be okay anyway. But as her mother, Shamara does have a responsibility to tell her daughter to fucking like pull her head out. You know, this is the way she should be with her daughter. And I think that to a degree, Jane needs to hear it because she is so caught up in the fairy tale aspect of how they had this history and what are the odds that this happens? Like, it is so easy to get wrapped up in that. It's just very, I'm, I'm not even somebody who is particularly big on like rom-coms and, you know, those kinds of like romance properties and stuff. I'm, I've never been a massive fan. And yet, even so... I still fall into that. And somebody like Jane, it's got to be a lot more powerful even. So Rowan says, I spent 18 to 32 jumping from relationship to relationship, but I've been single since then for more than 10 years now. Sometimes I think I've forgotten how to make room for someone else in my life. I wonder about that sometimes with like how I would be at this point, Rowan. And it's such an interesting thing because like part of me feels it would be a good thing because I do have so much that I let revolve around Owen. And, you know, it's a real like, it's a fine line between being a good partner and also being kind of codependent and, and making your life revolve around somebody else's life. But uh, alternatively, it can be so that you are an island and I don't know, personally, just as a woman, I feel like being in a place where you don't know how to let other people in is a safer place to be if you are somebody who dates men, unfortunately, because men are often just not to be trusted. So I advocate for that, if anything, but it isn't necessarily like emotionally satisfying always. So it's, it's just a really tricky thing. But anyway, I just wanted to like acknowledge because like, you know, I have this history as well and I'm being hard on Jane in terms of what she's doing, but also she's super young. Like, what is she supposed to be? Like 24, I guess. And she was 19 and that was five years ago. I mean, 24 is a messy age. I got married when I was 23 to Brendan and, uh, you know, the, the amount of growing I still had to do and the amount of developing that my personality was still going to undergo. I mean, it can't be overstated. So in some ways I'm like, well, I guess this is the time to make these kinds of leaps because you've still got enough like room ahead of you potentially to, to clean up if there's too much of a mess. But anyway, she is looking at her phone, waiting for it to ring and she is with her grandmother and mother and there is a call and it's him and he is at the door and he just wanted to see her. And I really have to say that the guy who's playing Raphael is very, very good at being infatuated with her. His acting when he sees her and the way that he lights up and how excited he is. I feel like the chemistry between them is pretty good as actors. I feel like it's there. But he, as a solo act here, is really, really convincing. And I think that part of what is speaking to me is that we haven't really seen him like this, you know? We have seen him in his defensive, sarcastic mode with Petra. And we have seen him feeling like awkward and weird around Jane or aggressive around Michael. 
we haven't really seen him just fucking happy, like excited. And so getting to see him just grinning and delighted, it's just sort of nice. You know, there's a part of me that is like, I wouldn't be mad if Jane wanted to keep this going just because he seemed to be so unhappy and now he's not. And that's a really nice change. But um, yeah, they're talking and he says, um, before things go further, I just want to do things the right way and take you on a date. And I also really want to kiss you again. And she is obviously like really into this, but she has to stop him. And she says, look, this is moving so fast. I was with Michael for two years. We were going to get married and we just broke up last night. Regardless of how I feel about you. And he butts in with, well, how do you feel about me? And I was just like, see, now this is what I mean. It's cute. I mean, I'm not mad. But she says, just give me some time. I have a lot on my plate. And he says, no problem. I get it. And I'm like, mm, do you? Because there was a real sense for me like he didn't. And she goes back inside, tells them that she has told him to pump the brakes and they seem to believe her. But there's, you know, for me, just kind of a, mm, yeah, we'll see how long that lasts because it doesn't seem like the men in her life are great at listening. And then Michael says via text, did I leave my watch at your house? And she says, yes, I'll bring it with me to work. And it takes all the wind out of her sails to hear from him, you know? So then we go to the uh, hotel and Petra, this is so funny. Petra and her mom, I don't remember her mother's name, are trying to figure out what the hell they're going to do with this man that she knocked out, who is still awake. I think this guy's name is Ivan. And, or he has come awake, I should say. And what they do with this dude, it's great. They are unsure how to handle the fact that he could cause a lot of trouble f for them, either awake or and and yelling or dead so they figure out this thing that i was really impressed i've got to admit it felt a little suspect but i i not enough for me to really give it any credence until i saw the the bracelet and then i was like oh my god okay so what they do, Magda, thank you, Rowan. First, they have a conversation outside the closet that they are keeping him in. And they make it like, I was wondering to myself, why are they talking so loudly where he can hear? Because I thought that what we might get was him figuring out a way to like escape out of here and that escape being a lot more desperate than it might otherwise have been because he knew they were thinking of killing him. But then once you look at the whole thing, I'm like, oh, I see. So they're discussing what should be done with him. And her mother is just like, we should just kill him. He is trouble. There's no good outcome. If we let him go, that you're going to be in trouble with Milos is the name that keeps coming up. Um, And... Yeah, they don't really know what they do with a body. Like, there's not a lot of good choices with that. And then Petra brings him out and she's like, okay, I have to keep you alive by feeding you. So cooperate. And he's a lot more docile now that he has heard they're thinking about maybe killing him. And she begins to feed him potatoes. And he starts to have this reaction. And she is like, what's going on? And he asks if there was peanuts, he's allergic to peanuts. Now I will be honest at this point, I'm thinking he's faking his reaction. I'm thinking that he is pretending to have a, a reaction, pretending to go unconscious so that they let their guard down and then he can like jump up and, and make his move. Turns out, no, this reaction is 100% legit. And they really wait a second 
before they use the EpiPen, which is just very conveniently right there. And they save his life from this reaction with the EpiPen. And what this does is get him to be loyal because they generously saved him when it would have actually been a lot easier for both of them if they just let him die. And it's a very clever, like, you know, it's, it's not actually a, an original idea. This is kind of a, an old play, but they do it so convincingly. And I would think somebody like Ivan would be familiar with this kind of play, but honestly, he feels like he's really the muscle. He's not the thinker. And the fact that he, I would guess, sees these two women as sort of incompetents who have wound up in this position of power over him by accident helps with him underestimating them a little bit, you know, apparently poisoning him by mistake also kind of makes them look like they don't know what's going on. All of this adds up to probably they're not that big a threat, but I should still cooperate if I can. And that's a very good place to be. So then we'll, let's talk now about uh, this weird thing that's going on with Jane at the high school. It turns out that the mother superior is making these like coins. They look like the medallions that people would wear around their necks of like different saints and stuff of Jane and inviting people in to hug her in the hopes that some of her fertility rubs off on them. Now, I understood in a vague sense what she meant about maybe this will make people come to the church. But I didn't realize like how direct a, an attempt she was going to make to get people to come in for Jane. And also, I don't think I fully thought about the fact that like, you know, I, I keep thinking about the comparisons to Mary, you know, Jesus's mother and her being pregnant, even though she is a virgin. I understand the, that comparison, obviously, but we know exactly how Jane got pregnant. So to me, that takes a lot of the mystery out of it. That means that there's like a, a logical medical scientific explanation. So doesn't that mean that it feels less interesting to people who have faith? But then the mother superior, when she's talking to Jane, because Jane finally sees one of these coins. At first, she keeps like getting sort of approached by apparent strangers who want to talk to her. And it's just like, because she hasn't been informed, the conversations are so awkward because she's trying to be polite and trying to figure out what their deal is. And her father at one point suggests that maybe these are fans of his and they know who her father is. And she asked somebody at one point, do you know my father? And they think, I guess, that she means God? Whatever. Um, but the mother superior says something about how, about her incredible fertility. And that made me stop and realize, like, the likelihood of Jane getting pregnant the very, very first time that she encounters sperm ever is pretty impressive. I don't know if that's a word I want, but unusual. Like, what is it that the doctor had said that there was only a 20% chance of this taking? And uh, so when she put it like that, I sort of took a step back and was like, Okay, I guess the fact that this was so unlikely to work, it does seem like, wow, this was meant to be like, this is God stepping in and doing something specifically on behalf of this woman. And then I sort of 
felt like I got it a little bit more. It's still tenuous for me, but honestly, so much regarding religion and faith feels tenuous to me that I'm willing to go with it because it seems like it's based in more than those things tend to be. So, okay. Um, and she has this like confrontation with the mother superior where she finally has to be like, I am not comfortable with this. And I appreciate that there is that one nun who keeps on being like, this does not feel right. But the mother superior is just not listening to her. So they stop doing it. But obviously this woman is really like cranky over it. She's feeling very salty. So after Jane has this night out, she, uh, comes in and and I'm jumping ahead a little bit here, but I just wanted to talk over this part of the story altogether. She comes in straight from Raphael's car, still in the dress that she went like clubbing in. And I was thinking as she got out of the car, I was like, girl, I already felt like the clothing you were wearing on the first day was really inappropriate. Like I am very broad minded when it comes to clothing. And often what I have worn to jobs has been, towing the line but she was wearing like a skirt that was well above the knees and it was a like a, the dress was sleeveless or the top was sleeveless it was something that i know at my school which was not particularly conservative it wouldn't have been considered appropriate i was really surprised that she wore that her first day so she gets out of the car here and once again i'm like this is not what you can t- what are you doing but i expected it to not really be an issue since the other outfit wasn't either and then we have this whole thing where she's confronted by the mother superior who is like that is super not what you're allowed to wear and jane says something about how she has a cardigan and i'm like yeah girl but your skirt is still real short and you're carrying like three inch chunky glittery heels like you know but they make a deal basically that she isn't in trouble if she keeps giving out hugs, which was extremely shady. This mother superior sucks. I hate it. I hate this for Jane. However, what are you going to do? So jumping back to what's going on at the, uh, at we, we have a scene with her, having breakfast with her father and uh, she is talking to him about her mother saying that he is being dramatic and that things were complicated. And we see the two of them each and the way that they handled things. So he gets real mad that she called him dramatic. We jump over to Shamara teaching her dance class to these girls. I have to say that I really love her outfit in this scene. She's got like, um, first of all, she's got hot pink sneakers on, which I also own. So approve of that. She's got this like uh, loose sort of orange open knit tank top that's over like a hot pink tank. And I always love orange and pink together. And this guy gets dragged in by his daughter who wants to introduce the two of them because they both like pistachio ice cream and the color orange. So they're perfect for each other. And this guy, I really like, I don't know what we're going to find out about him as a person later, but he was very convincing for me out of the gate. Like it's a very difficult thing to introduce a dude who is supposed to obviously be a love interest right away and not have it feel like okay i get it he's supposed to be so charming sometimes it can just come across as kind of schmarmy i guess even though it's supposed to be like he's winning her over it just feels so rehearsed that it's like unappealing and makes him seem more like a playboy type but I felt like this actor delivers these lines in a really disarming way that feels a little bit self-deprecating and like he's sort of laughing at himself. And so even though he is very good looking and obviously is confident, there isn't a sense of inevitability. Like he's walking in here fully assured that he's going to get a great reception. 
it's like more like okay i know how this looks and i get it if you just want to be like no thanks but i figured why not i may as well talk to you and see where this goes i mean who knows right and i just really liked him so at first she turns him down but then later on she has this encounter with rogelio where he says that he has a date which it turns out he did not and so she responds that she too has a date which she doesn't but she easily could and rogelio suggests that they double date because they are idiots so they wind up double dating together and it is incredibly awkward rogelio is that both of the what, what i'm sort of like feeling about this is that while both of them are really not being smart or kind in the way that they're handling this whole thing there is a part of me that judges Rahelio a lot more because I feel sure Shamara turned this guy down because she felt like it was too soon I and she changed her mind just in order to prove a point to Rahelio. that's true however she was clearly like kind of interested in this dude anyway and I feel like there is something genuine that she does like him and that while she may be trying to make a point with Rogelio, I don't feel like she's completely leading this guy on. I feel like there is something there. Rogelio though is uh, with this woman who bar barely has any like lines or personality really and there's a sense for me of her just being some groupie that he like knew he was going to be able to get her to go out with him at the like drop of a hat so for me i judge him a little bit more because it seems like he really is leading that woman on like i don't get any sense that he's actually into her and it's just all him using her, especially at one point he's like, come here, you and starts like kissing her at the table in a way that like is so performative and just gross, you know? So I don't know. Um, so this, this scene also, it's a really funny moment because what Rogelio tries to do is nail this guy to the wall for the fact that he is unemployed but it turns out that he has just retired from playing professional soccer. And the woman at the table that Rogelio has brought recognizes him and says, wait, you're Marco Esquivel? You're really awesome. And he says, I was all right, which I, again, I appreciate him. And Shamara has to chime in with like, oh my God. I'm so sorry. I feel like a real dodo. I didn't know this. And he says, yeah, I don't like to talk about it because people tend to act weird about me. And Rahelio, I agree completely. I wish people would treat me like a normal person. And then the waiter comes up and here's the bottle we special ordered for you, Mr. De La Vega. Please take it away. I'll be happy to drink normal people wine. <laughs> Oh my God, it's so fun. So he says, so why did you stop too old with this fucking smirk? And this dude, Marco says, my daughter, actually, I was just traveling too much. I can't miss all these important moments. And my, and the, you know, obviously this is exactly the kind of shit that Shomara would eat up. And this dude feels sincere it doesn't feel like he's saying what he knows she wants to hear. It feels like this is definitely true. And uh, this is when he says, my daughter won't stop talking about how much she loves your class. And Rogelio begins kissing this other woman and looking over to see if Shamara notices and if she's getting jealous. She doesn't notice. She is completely wrapped up in her conversation with Marco. And it is just really 
awkward to see the way that Rogelio is like turning out of the kiss. So this woman is starting to only like kiss his cheek and pull back and be like, what is happening here? And I was just like, oh my God, Rogelio, you're fucking killing me, dude. So anyway, yeah, like I said, I really, I judge Rogelio a lot more in this scene. Like, come on. So, all right. Let's talk about Michael. Oh, you guys. So he shows up at the lockers at her work to uh, get his watch. And she gives it to him and asks if he has seen her computer case. And he says, I can't do this. And she says, do what? And he says this, returning each other's stuff. What is happening here? Look, I lied. I I know that I didn't want the baby and I panicked and I am so sorry. But this is not the end for us, Jane. You don't go from marrying someone one day to breaking up. It doesn't happen. Which I just have to say, LOL. Yes, it does, Michael. Like, it's just, he is truly, the fact that he is so shocked that this consequence was on the table remains for me the point that I will repeatedly come back to proving that she should dump him. Like, it's just basically, I, I, I think you're overreacting. That's what he's saying over and over to her. You are overreacting. You are being ridiculous. And I cannot. Like, I had just, I was very understanding, I think, at the beginning of things. And as it got more and more involved and he was lying more and more, I really started to lose sympathy. And then really, the last episode, that was it. And this one, I am just extra like, fuck you, dude. And I will say, I appreciate at least at one point when Raphael is still pushing things with her that he says, well, you know, Michael was kind of a jerk to me. And she looks at him like, are you kidding? And she says, yeah. And apparently he had a reason to be because there is something here. And I liked that she said that, you know, because it just being like, oh, well, he was so rude to me. Yeah, dude. Well, he was threatened by you. And now you are fucking literally sending her dozens of roses and trying to like take her from him. You told her how you felt about her while she was still considering what to do about Michael in the hopes that you telling her that would change potentially the direction she went with their relationship. That is you trying to shoulder in on another man's woman. That's like just exactly what that is. So, to be like, well, ugh, I don't know if you're aware, but he wasn't always the nicest person. Like, what what point do you think you're making? And I think it's really, like, telling because, like, the whole way that scene goes, this one here, when she tells him first, Michael, you know, like, I feel how I feel. And he says, well, I, I'm sorry, but I had to ask. I'm like, you really didn't. But okay, sure, fine. But then we have this thing where later on he is coming to see her at the locker room again and those flowers are already there waiting for her and the flowers say there's like a card that went with them that say i really want to kiss you again or tonight i intend to kiss you again um because she agreed to go to this club opening now allegedly she's going to the club opening for her friend's birthday but Raphael is a investor in that club. So he's also going to be there and he's really sort of looking at this as a chance for him. And he leaves this bouquet with, the, with this card. And when she comes down to the uh, locker room, Michael is standing next to the table where the flowers are. And she thinks he brought them for her. Um, and he says, they're not from me. I just came by to drop off your computer case. They came while I was here. And he hands her the card and says, you're not the person I thought you were. Now, 
here's the thing. First of all, you didn't, you went and opened her card, which a part of me wants to be mad about. But let's be real. If you were in the room when an arrival of a huge bouquet comes for, from your very recent ex, it comes for them. And it's clearly romance flowers. This is not like, congratulations, you're having a baby flowers. I don't think many of us standing alone in the room with that would be able to resist opening that card. I'm going to be honest. Like, I don't think I would be able to keep myself from opening that card. I So as much as I want to be mad at him, I'm also sort of like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm going to give you this one, Michael. But then saying, you're not the person I thought you were. What the card actually specifically says, even though it's not a date, I'm going to kiss you again tonight. Kiss her again. You know that they kissed five years ago. So while you could take it as they were just kissing recently, it's also possible that this is about a kiss from five years ago. And the context, like, even though it's not a date, the fact that he specifically said that, it feels pretty clear to me that things aren't exactly equitable here for, on her side as well. Like, I feel like the, the subtext in that note is Jane is not fully on board. So I understand Michael getting mad, but I also feel like you're not the person I thought you were is not entirely fair. And yet we know that she did make out with Raphael right away, like hours after. So on that front, he is right. And that's what's like, <sighs> so she goes and talks to Raphael about this and is like, I told you to fucking slow down Michael saw those flowers and Raphael says, because she's like, he was so hurt. It was awful. And he says, Jane, that wasn't my intention. And I'm like, dude, what your intention was though, was to romance her, which she very clear, clearly just told you she doesn't want. She asked you to slow down. The response to I'm wanting to put the brace on this is not to send somebody a dozen long stem roses. Never mind the fact that like, the fact that he's having them sent to her locker room is so inappropriate. Like, you are still her boss. And if you want to pursue her, that's already a bit of a, like, gray area and a danger zone. But, like, doing it in such a way that every one of your other employees knows that's what you're doing feels like a really bad call. Like, it just feels like you're putting yourself in the way of a lawsuit, potentially. And I just don't think it's a smart move. And if you're going to send these, send them to her house. But the whole point was for Michael to see them. So he had to send them this way. Otherwise, it wouldn't have worked. Um, And the whole thing when he says Michael was been a jerk to me. And she says, don't you think that's justified? There's something here. He doesn't hear like her concern. He is zeroes in immediately. There's something here. That's my point. And she says, don't you understand? There's other people's feelings involved. We can't just do whatever we want. And when she says that, it really feels like there's a look on his face for a second. Like he genuinely had never considered that. You know what I mean? Like he is just so wrapped up in himself that he, her saying other people's feelings matter and you can't just do whatever is news to him. And guys, speaking again, as somebody who did leave her husband and bail for another dude, I did whatever I wanted. I absolutely didn't care how he felt. And I could say the whole time, I'm sorry to be doing this to him. But what it came down to was I did it anyway. And I regret handling it like that. There were, you know, you can end a relationship and move on 
without being absolutely brutal and callous to a person. And I didn't. I handled it as about as brutally and horribly as you can. And that is another thing that I think aging helps you to like really stop and understand. It's different than just being like, oh, I'm not going to dump this person even though I know I should because I care about their feelings. That's you being a coward. That's not the same thing. Jane is being very honest about where she stands with everybody and trying to honor their feelings and be respectful in the midst of it. She's really doing her best. And I think Raphael is so used to being able to pursue whomever and whatever he wants that the idea of having to consider anybody else, especially that somebody else having been kind of a rival anyway, it just doesn't occur to him that Jane would take it personally because as far as he's concerned, Michael's just not a factor anymore. She's not going to marry him. That's over. And it's like not that simple, especially I think he is in this position where Petra is an outright enemy for him now. So because he doesn't see Petra as a person he needs to look out for, he is sort of like failing to see Michael as a real person and not seeing from Jane's perspective at all, which is kind of the trap Michael fell into in terms of seeing the baby from Jane's perspective. So each of them is really having some trouble with like fully grasping the big picture here. Um, but, so anyway, yeah, that moment they, they go to the club and there is this like, she's so miserable because she's pregnant and can't drink and she's just watching this party there's this moment where one of the girls, because he's surrounded by women at this club, um, he is standing next to her. And I missed the moment. I had to rewind it. But she kind of like glances over and this girl like leans forward and licks his neck. And Jane immediately is like, all right, you know what? I'm out. And he sees her get up and tries to stop her. And they have a bit of a moment outside where he's like, look, and the way that he talks to her here, I get that you don't want to hurt his feelings, but if that's all it is, we can be discreet. And she's then like, that's not all it is. There's so many things. She brings each of them up and he says, okay, but we will put the baby first, no matter what. And if we work, what's better for the baby than for us to be together? And he makes some points. You're still married. I filed for divorce. But Petra's crazy. She filed assault charges. And he says, she wants money. If you say the word, I'll settle. We're from different worlds. And she starts to walk away at that point. And he says, this isn't my world, Jane. It used to be, but it's not anymore. I just want to be with you. And then the the little icons each disappear as they're talking you know with the the points that she is making and he says but the baby's not waiting let's take advantage of this time now before there are three of us and that that was the point that kind of made me stop in my tracks and go fuck that's a really good point like i don't have children so I'll say this freely, but I know your entire life is unrecognizable after you have a kid. It's just a completely different game. And taking advantage of the time they've got makes a lot of sense. You know, like, I, I, I what are you going to do? Try and date now that you've got a one-year-old or an infant? Like, that's doesn't sound like it would really work either. It really sort of made me like kind of completely do a reversal and realize like time is kind of the essence right now. You know, if she weren't pregnant, it would feel like this is way too soon. You can wait. But when he pointed that out, I suddenly felt the clock ticking and was like, fuck. Yeah. Okay. This does seem like something that if you're going to want to date him and get to know him on a one-to-one -one level, doing it without a child in the picture, ac actually out and about, this is the time to do it. Like, you know, so 
I was really uh, surprised at how much I changed my mind just from this conversation. He says, Jane, I want to get to know you. And she sits there and is thinking and she winds up running out after him. And when she talks to her mom about it later, she says that she has been safe her whole life. And she did that because she didn't want to end up where her mother was. But she's like, look, I'm now in a position where things are going wrong anyway. And maybe I should take some risks and do some things. And this is kind of what I was saying earlier with like, yeah, I did something that maybe on paper was not the smartest way to handle it with Owen, but look where I am and I'm happy here. So it does work out even if you don't handle things the smartest possible way. And, uh, you know, it's like not sending the signal that she wants, but on the other hand, fuck the signals. Like, what do you want beyond what it looks like to the world? So there's a scene of them getting snacks at Target, more product placement. And then it leads to her oversleeping at his place, even though they do not have sex. They they kiss a little, but it's not really a major thing. And then uh, everybody is wondering where she is. And her mother calls Michael looking for her. And Michael is fucked up over the fact that she didn't come home the night before. And I don't know if he thinks that she slept with him, but even if she didn't, it doesn't really matter. Like, you know, she's acting totally out of character and not getting in touch with any, but like, yeah, this is, it would fuck you up. It really would. Like as much as I do not feel like she should ever get back together with Michael. And as much as I don't like Michael, a lot of his reactions in this, I'm just kind of like, well, that's fair. Which results in Michael fucking his partner on the table in their investigation room. And it is so weird, you guys. I don't know what we're doing. But, like, clearly it's meant to be a rebound thing. But his partner is sort of, like, egging him on. Like, she knows that this tension is there. Even though I haven't felt like Michael feels this toward her. It just feels like an anger thing. You know? It's just really weird, that whole scene. I don't know. Um, and I, 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 I have to assume that because Michael is still part of the story and we're still seeing his perspective, and because of the whole Sin Nostro thing, he's going to be around a bit. So I don't know what we're going to do with him having slept with this other woman, especially because like, you know, he was with Jane for two years and Jane's a virgin. So he hasn't had sex for years and he's finally just going to bang this like partner, which everybody is just sit shitting where they eat. It's just not a good look. Um, so I'm just trying to make sure that I don't miss anything. Okay. There's one quick scene with, uh, with Shamara and Rogelio, where he is admitting that he was very, very jealous. He's super drunk on normal people wine, which is amazing. Um, Marcos, Marco comes back to her door and Rogelio is there behind her. It's so awkward. But I just really feel something between the two of them. I'm into it. And then we have Petra, who is working against Raphael with this dude whose name I'm forgetting, forgive me. And she goes over there and sleeps with him. She thinks to get money out of him, but it turns out he doesn't even have control of the money. So he's kind of playing her, which good for him because, you know, Petra needs to be played sometimes. She just does. But evidently she has some information about Raphael that could sink him. And she goes to, uh, Lachlan. Thank you, Rowan. She and Lachlan go to Raphael's dad. We don't know what this info is yet, but he catches Raphael when there is about to be this like romantic date between him and Jane. So Raphael unexpectedly gets diverted to Mexico City, I think is where he says he's going. And it's like clearly an emergency trip like he's doing something dramatic here and it's to keep his position because his father fired him and whatever it was that he did i have no idea how going to mexico city fixes this i don't know what he's doing but it's evidently something his father wasn't aware of and uh the fact that 
Petra has decided she's going to throw in with Lachlan. I'm not surprised that she did it, but I am surprised that she's just deciding to like fuck him as well because a bitch is just really willing to fuck anybody in order to do what she needs to do. And it's going to not work at some point, right? Like all of these dudes are just completely game to be played. And man, it's just a little too easy. Like at some point, this is not going to work. But for right now, it seems like a pretty reliable thing to do. So more power to you, I guess. I just was like looking at her undressing in front of Lachlan and knowing that she's only doing this so that she can get back at her ex. I was just thinking how if I were him, I wouldn't want to fuck somebody under those circumstances, knowing that they're not fucking me because they want me. They're fucking me as a transaction. It's just it would not appeal at all. But evidently, he doesn't care. So, okay. Um, I think that's everything. Uh, I'm over time anyway, so I'm going to have to wrap. But thank you guys very much again so much for listening, for commissioning these. Thank you, Lauren. And thank you, Rowan, for hanging out and giving me names and chat. Appreciate you. And until next time, toodaloo, motherfuckers. Spoiled Network Podcast.